at PDU. Today we're going to talk about how do you parallel your uh, V5 and your L-series um, prismatics and can you actually inter intermix, I suppose you would, uh, you would call it. So a lot of people have already got the V5 and are looking at maybe getting an additional battery just to give them some more amp power. So parallel basically means, in essence, that you're going to double the amount of uh, amp power you're going to have. The voltage is going to stay the same. That's not going to double or so on. It's not going to get up to 24. That's if you're going to put the serial series. And we'll look at doing that in another, another tutorial. Um, after this one, we'll, we'll add in a 24-volt um, uh, um, aircon, and we'll step that up to 24-volt. We'll show that in another tutorial. You can have a look at uh, our playlist uh, on YouTube. So what I've got here is I've got a V5 sitting over here. And at the end of this tutorial, you'll see I've got a two-minute video where I've installed one of these uh, in a ML320. Um, and I've got a, a, a L1A5 prismatic that's running in, um, in parallel with, uh, with the V5 in the back of the car. So I've got a 205 amp hour available in that vehicle. So normally you can't mix chemistries and things like that, but the way we're doing it, um, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, is we use a DC-DC between the two Lockheed Woodward Norm to a battery setup. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna use a Sega DC for simplicity. And that basically, all that does, it takes a certain amount of voltage in. The great thing about these are that you could actually, this takes nine to 36 volt in. So what it does, you could actually plug this into a truck or a, or a boat or a caravan that's 24 volt, and it will convert it down to 12.6 um, 10 amp or five amp, whatever these are set at. So this one is five and, and you get them in 10 of the same size. And then I've got a larger one, which is a 20 amp, and that's what I would, uh, I could use if I wanted it. But the way I'm gonna do this is with the 10 amp. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm using the v V5, which is 12.6, that's a 12.6 system, which runs from 12.6 down to 8.8 .8 volt, runs like a fuel gauge. The Prismatic or Live PA4 has a higher voltage, and it's it's one of those things that people will actually plug their fridges into these because uh, voltage sensitive equipment like fridges that cut out certain voltages, like say 10 and a half volt, uh, which is this, this fridge over here does, which is never really a problem because you've always got your batteries topped up or on solar and things like that. But this will run right through the cycle at 12.8 volt, so anything that's voltage sensitive, it, it doesn't worry about it, it's gonna run this flat. So the way I'm gonna have this set up is I'm gonna have this plugged into the V5, okay? Now I've actually got this on charge at the moment. So I'd actually plug this into the V5. I'll just use a Sega socket. I could use an Anderson to um, Anderson configuration with it. And that's actually got a fuse in the end of it, so that's got a 10 hour fuse. And then what I would do with this is because it's regulated now, and remember the prismatic only takes regulated, so I'm going to pull the charger out, which is in this one, and I will plug this into here. And that will charge quite happily. So that would actually charge the L-series quite happily. And you'll notice that it's not pulsating there at the moment because I've taken the charge off and this one is, is actually off. So <clears throat> what I've got there is I've got a V5 that's feeding the L105 and it'll quite happily be topped up from the vehicle or solar panel over there and it'll feed into this. So you basically have one as a master, one as a slave. But that's how you connect the V5 uh, to your um, L series. And what I'll do just to make it look a bit more live for you is I'll plug the charger back in here. And that's this is what you'd be doing if you had a solar panel um, or your vehicle with the DC DC. You'd be charging a regulated charge into these. Don't let anyone tell you you don't need to have a regulator between, or don't let them tell you it's just like a water flow that goes in and doesn't need a gate. Typically speaking, you can treat it like a dam where it's going to flow into one to the next to the next. You can loop these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 135 hooked onto the end of this in another, another tutorial. So two different, um, two different amp hour sizes. Um, these are the same chemistry. So what I'm going to do here is I've got this one here, 9 to 36 volt. 9 to 36 volt comes in to here. So obviously that there runs at 12.8, so that's no problem. And at the other end of this one, it's got this a 14.6 volt, 10 amp. So what I would do is I'd plug this into my secret plug socket, sorry, over here. I'll turn it around so you can see it. So that's now charging, and I'll plug this into my regulated input. These L series are 50 amp in, 50 amp out. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that in there, like so. And that one's at 12.6, I need to 14.6 on the set. That's right, so that one's for the Nomads, that's 12.6. So this one here. 14.6. So all you've got is those step-ups, you just read the back of them, it'll tell you what it is, what's the voltage on it, because you can get them to say 24 volt. 
they can actually step a 12 volt system up to 36 volt. They're just a step up. They're also referred to as step downs because that's a step up, but if you plug it into a truck at 24 volt, at the other end it's going to come out at 12.6 or 14.6, whichever one, whatever it is. So that's a step down. You can get them to step down to 6 volt or less, and then you can have them from that voltage up. So that's all it is. What's coming in, what's going out. So the way we do that is we say, okay, that's now putting power out, and it's charging this one. We'd use that as the master and feed all of our charging to that one. So you could have your, because they're a 50 amp, you could put a 400 watt solar panel and with a controller on it and charge that, and that's going to feed this one. And then you could have whatever you want running off this one here. You could have a fridge running and things like that. This one's actually got a fridge running off it. So how it's set up like this, you could actually leave it like that and have that running the fridge and then have this doing this and run stuff off there if you want. But the purists will say use one as a master, one as a slave. But you can set up like this. I've had it like this for a number of days. Um, and if you look at the uh, end of this tutorial, you'll see where we put it in the vehicle. It works a treat. Um, I can add a 135 to this if I wanted to, and I'd just do exactly the same. And then what I would do is I'd use, okay, the Anderson. I might use an Anderson configuration and run it across. You know, I could have a 5 amp charger going there and a 10 amp across there. It doesn't matter. It's just going to work itself out. Um, that's pulsating because it's charging. Um, that may or may not be pulsing. Yeah. So that's pulsating because that fridge is at temperature. So it's taking it from the, from the wall. Let's take a 10 amp. And then it's putting 10 amp across there. Uh, as you can see, it works perfectly fine. So that's how you can do two of the same, same L series in parallel. Um, or you can run a V5 with one of these because you're using a step up. But don't let anyone tell you, you can just connect them directly and all that and then have a direct connection, no fusing and all the rest of it. Um, we might be able to do it ourselves, uh, but we know what we're doing. You've got Andersons all over the place here and the thing is people are going to get fused on inputs and outputs. Um, how they protect, are they bi-directional and all these types of things. The simplest thing is put a gate between them. That's got a fuse in it to the DC, into that. It's one way, not going to back feed. Um, and that's just a safe way to do it. So that's how you parallel. Uh, L series and or you want to connect say a V5 because a lot of people have got V5s now uh, want to get a prismatic <clears throat> but obviously you want to get the most out of them and yes you could have the two systems running and like the end of this tutorial you can have 205 amp power or this here is 210 if you add a 135 then that's going to be 345 345 amp power of usable at a campsite so a lot of people got these each in their vehicles you could connect them up at a campsite and make sure you've got like 300 or 400 amp power and the good thing about that it's not one battery you can split them up, okay? You can charge them separately, or you could have one of these charging, and that's basically charging each one down the, down the, down the line. Just make sure you follow that, that type of looping instruction. And these are DC, DC, or uh, step-ups, you can call them. All they are is a voltage stabiliser. It takes that voltage in and stabilises it to a certain amount of voltage out. That's all it does. It's nothing fancy. Simply what's coming in, looks at it and goes, okay, let's regulate it and put out this much. It's on there. Um, you can buy these yourselves <coughs> as modules. But we do run into issues with people that are, re are wiring them incorrectly. And what they're doing is they're trying to charge their car from the battery. So what they've got is th th they're saying it's not charging. And then when we look at it, they've actually got it back to the front. And they're using, this is basically the, uh, <laughs> this is the putting the output and the inputs going into the car. So they're actually trying to charge the vehicle. It's just a matter of chaining it around. So if you're not sure what you're doing, uh, it's best to, to get something like that. For 150 bucks for a 10 amp uh, step up uh, SIGID DC, they're well worth having because not only can you do this, but you can charge it from your vehicle. So that plug there, if you remember 90, 36 volt, if I pull this out and put it into the car SIGA plug, or socket, sorry, well that takes 90, 36 volt and converts to 14.6. That's going to charge, it's perfectly fine. And that's how you can charge it in the car if you don't want to do anything with, you know, full wiring and, and put a full, complete DC from the front to the back. You can still do that. Just make sure your SIGA socket in the car is rated at least, at least for 15 amp if you're going to run a 10 amp. Um, and if you're going to run a 5 amp, it's not a problem because you've got to remember, because it's stepping up, it'll pull out. If it's a 5 amp, it's going to draw about 7 amp. So if it's a 10 amp, it's going to draw about 12 because it needs that because it's converting. So just, just remember that. And don't always run things to their limits. That's the whole point is if it says it's a 50 amp in and 50 amp out, 100 times out of 100, people are going to say, well, it must be able to do 60 amp. And that's not the case. The limits are the limits and they're there for a reason. Don't exceed them because it's not meant to do that. It's not a guesstimate. Um, they're exact, um, which is the way the BMSs are built. So, look, that's a bit of a, a cool way to connect all these up. You can do them. Just step back, and if you're not sure, contact at nomadpdu.com.au. I'd rather you send us an email, tell us what you want to do, and then we'll tell you how to achieve it. Uh, so that's how you set these up in parallel, and then you'll have a look uh, at the following tutorial of this one, and that will be uh, adding a 135 and stepping that 135 up to 24 volt, and we'll run our aircon off that. So, again, thanks for joining us. Hope that... Uh,
Okay, so here's a, <clears throat> a dual setup that I've done in under an hour just using equipment that uh, we have uh, standard with Nomad, so the Nomad brackets uh, for the L-Series, the 105, 135, that's a 105 there. That's a V5, 100 amp hour. What I've got is I've got that uh, running off a of SIGA DC and that's plugging into my SIGA socket here um, and that's going to be fired up now because this actually is on when the, um, the car is off <clears throat> and that's charging the V5 at the moment and that V5 is now charging the L series so I've got a 5 amp SIGA DC here that's 14.6 volt which is what the uh, NMC or sorry the uh, life PO4 does it takes 14.6 volt um, whereas this one over here is taking 12.6 from the car so basically I'm looping that in so I've got 100 amp hour here 105 amp hour here so in total I've got 205 amp hour that I can use. I can use any of the outputs from either of those units and simply it's the car's feeding the Nomad V5 and the V5 is feeding one of the L series there. So basically you've got a full dual setup. This took me less than an hour. Um, I'm using the Sigur socket obviously in the car um, but you could use and probably see it in a video coming up soon. <clears throat> we'll use like a uh, 20 or 40 amp Matson, which has a solar input. So I can connect the solar to the, the V5 over here, unregulate if I want to, or I can connect a regulated solar into the uh, L series. Um, but that just gives you an idea as to how versatile these units are. And now I've got the uh, 40 litre fridge that's just uh, running off the, the L series over here. Um, and that's on the app on my phone. You can see it's currently running at 87% there. It's pulsating because it's charging, and it's charging from the V5 over there. I don't have the V5 plugged into the, the vehicle at the moment, but that V5 is going to just keep topping up this L-Series. When I get to camp, I'll chuck a solar panel onto the V5, most likely 200 watt panel, um, or plug, plug the SIGA socket into the vehicle. This uh, Mercedes has a 20 amp socket, so I'm running a 10 amp from the car, um, but I only had a 5 amp SIGA DC 14.6 uh, volt available just at the moment, so that's what I'm running here. But I could quite happily run a 20 amp from the V5 to the L series or the 10, it doesn't matter, um, and that voltage is 14.6. So that just shows you a, a dual setup, total amount of 205 amp hour uh, installed in under an hour. Cheers.